it's really important to calibrate your battery. And I'm going to tell you how to do it and why. In my previous video, you will have seen that I uh, got stuck on the side of the road because I ran out of battery effectively and uh, my own stupidity. I'm not going to blame anyone else apart from myself. Uh, the, the only thing that kind of made it happen, I suppose, is that I was blindly following the GOM. The GOM is the range meter. I was following that and uh, thinking that was gospel. And of course, I should know by now that it isn't. It's called the GOM for a reason. That means guessometer. It's a guess. The car hasn't got any idea, really, uh, how much range is left, or at least not an accurate one. Um, so following that is just plain stupidity. Me letting the battery get down as low as it did as well is, is stupid as well. So let me just recap very quickly. Watch the video, that would help. But if you don't want to watch that, I left home with 15% of the battery and it said 39 miles on the, on the GOM. The trip was 13 miles each way. I got there to the park that I was going to with my daughter. It said 9% battery and 23 miles on the GOM. So I thought, well, you know, 13 miles back home, that would leave me with 10 miles comfortably, I'll be fine. But once you get to 8% of battery, the uh, the e Nero will put you into um, a tortoise mode or a turtle mode. And once that happens, the power will be limited. And that did happen. At, at the point that it came on this 8% state of charge, uh, I had 12 miles on the GOM. And I still had, you know, I still could have gone home in theory without those 12 miles, but those miles started dropping quite badly. And when I got to 3% battery, um, I got um, what I call the turtle head mode, which is the point when, you, <laughs> when you're really panicking because you think, oh my God, I'm really not going to get home. And then it said like power limited and all this kind of thing. And I pulled over um, in a safe place. And at that point I had four miles left on the GOM and 2% battery four miles on the GOM, in theory, I should have been able to get home. I was three miles away from home, so I should have gotten home, really. But uh, it doesn't work like that, unfortunately. I could have, I could perhaps have carried on going and I would have been crawling along, but it came up with a like a ba red battery sign. And um, it's, uh, you know, I don't want to damage the battery just for the sake of me trying to get home. And also my daughter was in the car, she was in a state. So that's what happened. Now at the time, my it was just myself to blame really because I didn't charge the night before um, I hadn't been using the car a couple of days I don't want to go into all this again anyway I didn't charge at home even though I could have uh, I didn't even top it up and I should have there are no charges on the route but that's you know that's irrelevant really because I can charge at home and I didn't so that's what happened on Saturday lesson learned I'm not gonna go beneath 10% again so one of the things that people said was, well, actually your battery might not be calibrated. In fact, they said a couple of things really. Um, it's cold. So if you sit, if your car is sat for a while, and it was, it was sat for like two hours in a car park in five degrees, then, you know, that's not good for the battery. So that's very true. So, um, so that's true. It was cold, that wouldn't have helped. The other issue is that the battery could have needed calibrating. And that's what I'm going to talk about now. So to recalibrate a battery, you have to cycle it. And to cycle it, you get down quite low. So like 20% or something like that, and then charge it right up to 100%. And once you do that, that's called a battery cycle. And it kind of works out then, like in the car, it works out what range you've got far more accurately than you would have before. Now I do this, or I try to do this every month, because that's generally what's recommended with car batteries. Charge up to 80%. Um, and then like once a month or something, once or once every two months, you charge up to 100% and you recalibrate the battery. I haven't done this for a while because we've been on lockdown. And normally I do that before a long trip. So in, um, well in, Oct yeah, in October we went to London actually and I did charge up to 100% then. But we were hoping to go somewhere in uh, November. But then lockdown happened and uh, we had to rearrange that of course. So. I didn't do that 100% that I would normally have done before a long trip. So because I didn't do that 100% charge, the battery probably wasn't calibrated. So I thought I would test this. So what happened when I, uh, when the car came back here, I charged it that night. Um, I didn't charge it up to 
so I get four hours of cheap electricity and it, it's just set to do that so I forgot to disable that so it only charged up to 75% 75% of the battery is 48 kilowatt hours my maths is terrible right so I'm sure someone, someone will spot a mistake um, and it said 213 miles on the GOM my efficiency was showing us 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour but actually it doesn't work out the GOM based on that value it it works it out over a longer time period I think so we can ignore that 3.9 miles so what I did last night um, was I charged it up to 100% and based on what based on what the GOM was saying for 75% it should have in theory said 284 miles on the GOM but instead it said 265 miles which is a shortfall of 19 miles so that I think proves that it wasn't calibrated so um, if you charge up to 100% that recalibrates it and yes it so it changed to 265 miles which is a far more accurate um, range I imagine especially as it is cold at the moment 284 miles would be pretty good in this weather um, given that 282 miles is what Kia say the e-Nero does in terms of range so 19 miles adjusted so bearing in mind if those 19 miles had been removed from the range then I obviously would not have left the house because it said 13, 39, it said 39 miles when I left the house. You know, take away 19, that leaves 20 miles. That wouldn't have been enough to get there and back. So that does suggest that recalibration was needed and it suggests that the battery just wasn't calibrated. So my, my moaning, well, a little moan, I suppose, about the Nero is unjustified. It's really my own fault again, I think. So this is something to bear in mind. If you have an electric car, and I believe they all work the same way, they do have a BMS that's the battery management system which it does look after the battery and it does report on how the battery is and all the rest of it but it still needs a power cycle it still needs calibrating just as your laptop battery does in fact my laptop the battery is not as good as it used to be um, in fact it just fails quite a lot you know um, and that's because I have I've had it plugged in at 100 percent for months and months and when you do that it just the battery doesn't like it uh, just as it doesn't like it if you only charge to 80 percent all the time and you don't charge up to 100 so that's that calibrate your battery on a couple of other points um the 12 volt battery also failed on this on this night on saturday and it meant that the recovery person couldn't get it up onto the flatbed truck he had to um he had to charge up the 12 volt in fact i think he used my little box here so I've got a little jump starter here, um, which is really good. So you get those bits there, and that's what I've got there. Um, and this is really good, great to have in the car for emergencies, because the 12 volt, uh, in, in all, ele all electric cars have 12 volt batteries, and in theory, all of them could go wrong. Now what would normally happen is that the e-Nero the e the e would ordinarily top up that 12 volt battery but apparently it doesn't if it gets below 15% of battery which is interesting so um, at that point obviously I was driving along listening to the radio and uh, had the lights on and things like that that all drains a 12 volt battery so that's why the 12 volt uh, was depleted by the time the recovery truck wanted to get it. It wasn't depleted. It wasn't depleted a massive amount. In fact, uh, just um, apparently he, he said he just had to touch it for a second, and then everything came back to life. So, so that's worth bearing in mind as well. Another reason, really, not to go too low on your on your state of charge. So that apparently happens at about fifteen percent. Other interesting things that I've found out. Then someone else. Um, in fact, a few people have said that on their on their e Nero, it flashes. You get the three dashes uh, on the GOM at a certain point, and they said five percent below five percent battery. Now I didn't get that on mine. Mine was quite happy to go down to whatever it was two percent battery, and it still wasn't doing that. So that could be something that's in the newer models. I've got the first edition e Nero, so perhaps newer models do that. That's the same kind of thing that the Leaf does the Nissan Leaf when I had that that does the three dashes which is of course you go into panic mode then but in some respects if the car can't work out accurately how many miles you've got left then maybe that's not too bad 
uh, you know, you could you could say that it's inconvenient to not know what the range is, but I didn't. I thought I did know what the range was, and I didn't. So maybe it's maybe it's better. Had I had I had those dashes, then uh, perhaps I really would have stopped somewhere just to borrow someone's electricity, um, which which I could have done. Being an electric car, I can plug in anywhere in theory. So there's that. Um, cold weather, yes, cold weather does impact a battery. Batteries do not perform well in cold weather. Um, and the other thing that was interesting is that I did have a loss of power at 8% and then again even worse at 3 or 4%, whatever it was. Um, some people have been saying that they've got it down to 4% battery with no loss of power. So I don't know why that is, to be honest. Could be that um, it could be that these people were doing less speed, perhaps, and maybe that's why. Maybe it thinks that if you're going quite fast, um, then it really does have to limit it. Um, I don't know what it is. Perhaps it's newer models of the e Nero having a better battery management system. I I really don't know what um, what that would be. If you do, then leave comments because I love reading all these comments because um, I learn quite a lot from them. Remember, I don't profess to know everything about electric cars. I'm just, I'm just a normal person driving around, a bit of an, an idiot to be honest, driving around in one, learning as I go. Uh, I'm obsessed with electric cars, but it doesn't mean I know everything about them. If you do want a real deep dive into electric cars, you may have heard of him. If you look at Bjorn Nyland, who's in Norway, uh, he gets proper technical and he knows his stuff far better than I do. So. That said, so it's interesting, there appeared there appear to be differences with the e-Neros. My first edition one seems to handle things a little bit differently. So it'll be interesting if I do end up getting a newer e-Nero, I'll try and do some more tests. Well, I don't know about, I don't want to, I don't want to go that low again, to be honest. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm going to do that again. Um, but yeah, that's all I've got to say about it, really. So bottom line is recalibrate your battery. It's really, really important. Recalibrate it. Charge up to 100 uh, ideally every month do 80% when you can charge to 80% as much as you can and then do like one charge up to 100% and then that will be great that will recalibrate the battery and then you should get a much truer reading of your GOM so the other thing that people said is uh, I should have had OVMS plugged in now OVMS is this little box that I have down here that there and I, I have that plugged into the OBD2 port, which is next to the steering wheel, underneath next to the steering wheel, and that gives diagnostics. So there's the app. That's o OVMS, or Open Vehicles. And this does give lots of information. It would have been quite useful for, so for, like for the 12 volt. It's telling me that I have... Uh, volt the voltage is 14.3 volts, which is okay. So I'm fine with that. Now, I didn't have that plugged in because generally I just use it on long trips. I didn't think it would be necessary on that trip. The problem with OVMS is that it does drain the 12 volt battery. So that's another reason for not having it plugged in. And I've had the battery uh, go, my 12 volt battery is gone on two separate occasions. And I think OVMS was plugged in both times. So I'm a little bit more careful with it now. I do just, I just tend to plug it in uh, yeah, on long journeys. And perhaps this 15% cutoff, if it, if it doesn't charge up the 12 volt battery at 15% state of charge, then perhaps having OVMS plugged in at that point is a really bad idea. So that's worth bearing in mind as well. Okay, thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, then please press subscribe and press the bell icon. I'd really appreciate that. I really appreciate all your comments as well, actually, because um, as I've said, I learn an awful lot about uh, EVs from them because so many of you are much more knowledgeable about things than I am. Um, some of you are like really good about like physics and stuff like that. You know, I get I get quite a good lesson um, every time I post a video. Um, so thanks very much. Thanks for going easy on me as well because you could have ripped me <laughs> could have ripped me to shreds. I did get more dislikes on that last video than I have for a long time. So I think those dislikes probably are people saying, um, you know, mate, you're an idiot. Um, or maybe there were maybe it was Kia saying you're dissing our car, dislike, and um, fair enough. So, uh, it's not the car, it's me. That's the moral of the story. Alright, thanks very much for watching, and I'll speak to you very soon. Bye for now.